Hey y'all, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we are going to be talking about the state of HTMX in 2024. So HTMX blasted onto the web dev scene in 2023 and has continued to grow at a steady clip through 2024. For many, myself included, it unlocks a simpler path for building web apps without the need to reach for complex spas and the often unstable JavaScript ecosystem. And so in this post, we'll cover the state of HTMX in 2024 from several different angles. We'll start off with what is HTMX and what is it used for? Then we'll go into how popular is HTMX? Then do people like using HTMX? Is HTMX actually used in production? And finally, are there any HTMX jobs? So first off, what is HTMX and what is it used for? So HTMX provides high power tools for HTML, but I think a more apt description is a library that extends HTML, providing a few extra capabilities to HTML elements that make them much more useful. Now HTMX offers a lot of features, but the big unlock really is that together they enabled partial page re-renders for server-side rendered HTML. And this is basically what a MPA or multi-page application does, server-side rendered HTML. And so partial page re-renders are extremely useful when building modern web apps. In fact, I argue that this is really what makes a web app feel modern and is what spas do under the hood that made them so so powerful and then so popular, kind of taking over a lot of the web dev um, ecosystem for several years. And for more info, you can go in here, but the idea is you kind of get away from those clunky like government websites where the whole thing re-renders and like, you know, it feels slow and more towards what a modern web app feels like um, where it's only reloading the part of the page that actually matters. And so here's like kind of how I like to explain the difference between MPAs, HTMX and SPAs. And so I think for a long time, MPAs are down here and they're pretty simple to build, low complexity, but you can't get very good UX and this is because they don't allow partial page re-renders, right? They have to reload the whole thing every time you need new information, um, which can be very slow and clunky. The whole web page flashes, you might lose your state and focus and stuff like that. SPAs came in because they were able to achieve much higher UX with here. But the problem is they also bring with them a lot of complexities. Like if we actually think about what these SPAs are doing, they require their own domain specific language and their own way to deal with state and all of this stuff that is separate from any kind of like web fundamentals that you might be used to themselves. Um, and they do bring with them a lot of power, but they also bring with them a lot of complexity. And what HTMX is doing is basically bridging the gap. It's like, what if we let you build things basically like an MPA with just a few extra attributes, but it allows these partial page re-renders. And so you get a lot of the UX that you need with only a little bit of extra complexity. And that's basically how I describe the difference between these three. And so really when I talk about HTMX and the way that you know I think about building it, is that basically you just build your website like a multi-page application. And so it's simple, very simple to this. And then you just sprinkle in HTMX where partial re-renders are useful. Most web apps are mostly static. And so you'll find that actually you don't need that much HTMX in here to make it feel more modern. And then this allows you to get that UX of a modern app for very little added complexity. How does HTMX actually do this? Um, well, the brief version is basically that elements declare where to get new HTML. So how do I get that re-render of myself um, or a different part of the page? What do I actually do with that HTML? So once I re-render or get the new HTML back, like where does it go? Are there any conditionals, stuff like that? And then what actually triggers this re-render? And by doing this, you get the ability to control, trigger, and enact this partial re-render all within HTML attributes. And basically you declare this using attributes just on an element. So similar to like in a tags href, which says like where the link goes, it's the exact same thing for HTML. It's just like, where do I get it? Where do I put it? Stuff like that. And then on the server side, you just provide endpoints that receive these requests and return um, the HTML. And then this gives you the full, you know, partial page reloads using a fully server driven a paradigm. So that's the brief version. Um, actually going into details on HTMX and using it and stuff are beyond the scope of this post. But if you want to learn more about this, you can learn how I like to use it with simple interactive islands with F sharp and HTMX. All right, so on to the next section, how popular is HTMX? So HTMX has been around for many years with its first commit on uh, April of 2020 but it's actually been around even longer, originally being called intercooler.js, which itself was started back in 2013. HTMX is basically intercooler 2.0. And while HTMX has been around for a while, we can see that really its popularity started to take off in mid 2023. And so here's the GitHub stars history. 
um, for the HTMX repo. And we can see that like it's been around for a while and it's just slowly upticking, but really here around June of 2023, it really starts to take off on a different uh, vector. And so in 2024, HTMX is more popular than ever, but that doesn't mean it's really a huge player in the web space yet. According to Stack Overflow 2024's dev survey, HTMX is the 22nd most popular web framework, really a library, um, and used by about 3.3% of developers. So here you can see this here, you know, the top five is like Node.js, which is kind of weird they include it in web frameworks, but okay. Um, React, jQuery, Next.js, and Express. And then HTMX is around the, you know, 22nd spot. Um, near Ruby and Astro. And so this may seem pretty small and you know it is compared to the major players, but I think it's useful to put it in perspective to see where it lies with respect to other players in the space. And so again, obviously at the top, we have the big mainstream players. So you've got your React at 39.5%, jQuery 21%, Next.js at 17%, Angular at 17%, and Vue at 15%. And so HTMX is still a very fringe technology compared to these mainstream frameworks. But if we zoom into the technologies that boast similar usage, we find some pretty surprising and well-known players. And so looking around this 3% mark, you know, we see Svelte at 6. 5%. We see Blazor, we see Ruby on Rails, Astro, Phoenix, Remix, and Solid, all of which are pretty well-known players, if not, you know, mainstream. And HTMX is right there with them. And as we'll see, a lot of these often boast very well-loved percents um, in the next section. Now, of course, these are always surveys, and so they can always be a bit biased on like who um, actually responds to things. And so we're going to cross-check this data with the State of JS's 2023 survey. And we do see similar results, at least in this section. So HTMX comes in ninth, most popular with 5.1% of usage. It's way down here is this little purple dot. And this is a good thing to cross-check against because the survey is geared more towards like front-end respondents versus Stack Overflow, I would say is like more engineers overall, but probably even biasing towards full stack backend. And so this gives us a little bit of a, a cross check on this data. And so HTMX is not a mainstream web technology, but it does have a sizable and steadily growing user base. All right, next we're gonna talk about, do people like using HTMX? So it doesn't matter how popular your technology is if no one likes it. People will just use it once then, drop it for something else. You know, this is the attrition problem. And to see if people actually like using HTMX, we'll again reach for data from Stack Overflow's 2024 dev survey. And here HTMX comes in second most admired web framework with 72.9%, coming only behind Elixir's much praised Phoenix framework at 83%. Note admired is a bit confusing here, but basically it means if you've used the technology in the last year, and you want to use it again in the next year. So here's the most admired web frameworks, and I've also pulled out some notable large ones to see how they compare. So here, see here HTMX at 72.9%, which actually leads Svelte and Astro, which themselves usually are like highly praised in the JS ecosystem. And then we see that like React, Vue, Angular, Next.js, they all kind of get like around 60%, um, which is quite a bit lower than all of these. And jQuery gets only 35%, which I feel like is doing it a disservice, but you know, that's what people voted for. And so overall, this is pretty good. You know, HTMX is coming in very competitive against the big players and even a lot of these small players, which are well-renowned in the industry for having like good experiences, really changing the mold of how we do web dev. And so that's a really good sign for it. Now I do want to caveat that the bigger the framework, the more likely it is to have been picked up by newer devs or devs that don't really mesh with that style. And so this means it's likely to, the more widely used frameworks also will have more bad reviews, thus kind of giving them lower rankings here. And I think this is why we see, you know, jQuery, React and stuff getting lower bits because they're just used by more people, more people are gonna have bad experiences and that's gonna tank their percentages. Whereas when we look at these, they're more fringe and probably if you started trying them out and using them, it's because like you were already looking for something new and you, you know, kind of like filtered out a lot of these frameworks to find this one as the particular one that has the attributes you want. And so it's likely those people already self-selected themselves into liking these attributes in the first place. Um, and so I think this is probably not so fair to these more mainstream ones, but you know, this is the data we have. And of course we'll cross-check this with the state of JS. And so when you look at those responses, which, you know, again, biases more towards front-end engineers, we get a slightly different story. And so here HTMX comes in fifth with positive sentiment, but only at 40.9%, which is, you know, like less than half. Now I do want to note here that positivity here is defined differently. So this is, are you interested in learning more about this or are you willing to use it again if you've used it before? Which is just, yeah, it's just a different measure. I don't know if this one's particularly better. I think it's probably worse actually. 
Um, but we'll try to put this into context. And so I think the difference in opinion between the front end leaning, you know, people from state of JS and the more full stack back end leaning people from stack overflow engineers makes sense. You know, HTMX is largely an unlock for people that like server side rendering, which is often going to happen in the form of MPAs. You know, if you're reaching for HTMX, it's probably MPAs. Yes, you can do like RSC, but that's only if you're already in like spa land basically. And so if you're already happy with the state of front end today, which is mostly going to be spa people and therefore more likely to be responding to state of JS, then it's unlikely that you'll be interested in picking up HTMX. And so I think these low numbers and state of JS doesn't really surprise me. And so overall, it seems that engineers do like using HTMX, though it's more liked by back end and full stack folks than front end leaning engineers, especially those that probably already know and are good at spas. All right, so do people use HTMX in production applications? So the answer to this is yes. There are engineers and companies running HTMX in production. However, it's a bit harder to find data on how prevalent this is and whether or not this usage is like critical to the app and user facing, or if it's more relegated to like side use cases, internal apps and dashboards or stuff like that. Now, the general trend seems to be that the smaller companies are choosing HTMX due to its simplicity, and HTMX is starting to be used in internal apps and larger companies. But much of this is anecdata data pulled from various forum and social posts. For some example of these, you can look at HTMX and production here, which summarizes some of these posts and responses um, from around the web. Now, HTMX also has a small list of websites that use HTMX, but I'm really not sure how up to date this is, and it's certainly not all websites that are using HTMX. If we go here and go to list sites, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 10, 11, 12, like 13 of these. And, you know, I've checked a few of them and it does look like they still are using HTMX, but this seems kind of random. So I don't think we really have like a central repository of HTMX websites. Now for a bit more anecdata, I personally am running HTMX on several of my side projects, but I wouldn't say my use cases are particularly demanding. These are all dumb little websites that like get very little usage. So full stack projects, which uses HTMX for rendering idealists, 1000 checkboxes, which uses HTMX for swapping out the checkboxes in near real time, and travel map, which is using HTMX for text to address lookup, you know, via server interactivity, and then integrating with Alpine for the client interactivity. And so overall, I would give this like a tentative yes, like HTMX is running in production, but I really don't have much data on how prevalent this is or how central this technology is to the overall system. And so without access to this data directly, Perhaps a better proxy is just gonna be jobs because if a job exists, then it's likely that company is using HTMX. And so that's probably what we have to go off of to see if this is like critical or not. Now, if you do have access to this data somehow, please let me know. I would love to look at this because um, I think this is fascinating and would be useful to a lot of folks. All right, finally, are there jobs in HTMX? So yes, there are jobs using HTMX, but not many, especially when compared to more mainstream frameworks like React. And honestly, this reminds me of F-sharp, and you can find the state of F-sharp here as well, where we go into a similar thing like we're doing here with HTMX. Now, first we'll search a few jobs for HTMX to see how they compare. So if we looked at LinkedIn here, you know, I just popped over to the jobs thing, looked for these, I'm in the US, and HTMX comes up with a grand total of one job, and React comes up with 37,000 jobs. So yeah, is there a job in HTMX? Yes, one job. Um, React has way more. And then we can cross check this with like Indeed. And so Indeed has five jobs for HTMX, React has 5,000 plus, And I honestly think it's probably way higher than 5,000 plus. It's just their like pagination thing just capped it at 5,000. And so yes, there are HTMX jobs, but not many. So if you want a job, probably prioritize the more mainstream web frameworks on your resume first. Next. So what does this mean for you in HTMX? Should you use it to build your next web app? And is it worth learning and investing? And I think it depends, and really it's up to you. I think if you want to build modern web apps faster and cheaper than with spas, then I think you should go for it. It really does open up a whole new way of building web apps that I personally found much simpler and more satisfying. But if you already know or are happy with spas, then you probably really don't need it. Like the whole thing that it's trying to do is allow web apps to be built totally driven by the server. Um, but if you're already happy with the state of JS and you know state of spas, then like, you know, you've already figured that out. So you, you might be able to pass on it. And then finally, if you want a job in this, you actually want to make money off this stuff, then I think you should probably just focus on the more popular web frameworks first and play with HTMX on the side. 
you know, at the end of the day, React is probably what pays the bills for web dev. So go for that first. But overall, I think HTMX and certainly the concepts it stands for are here to stay. Whether you like it or not, HTMX unlocks a more sane path to web dev for a lot of web developers. And HTMX itself may go away. And we actually hope it does as its capabilities are absorbed by the standard HTML spec. But the idea that you can and should be able to build modern web apps with simple server-side rendered multi-page applications will certainly remain. We've been doing it for decades and we will continue to do so for decades more. If you like this post, you might also like what it's like to run HTMX in production, stories from experienced software engineers. You might also be interested in HTMX versus Alpine, which should you use for your web app? And finally, you might be interested in why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty MPA and complex spa. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.